Does spinal decompression make your lower back worse and increase your disc herniation or sciatica pain? Well, you are not alone. Although spinal decompression can feel good for some, it can cause flare-ups and worse pain for others. Now, why is this? In this video, I'm gonna explain to you exactly why that is and how you can decompress your discs and fix your disc herniation and sciatica without these expensive and unnecessary decompression protocols and instead with some very simple exercises that you can do in your home right now. So why would decompression make someone's back pain worse. For many individuals, their disc cannot tolerate traction or negative pressure. That is the primary mechanism behind spinal decompression. It creates negative pressure on the disc to try to create a vacuum effect to give the disc space to regress back to its central location. But not all discs will like this. For some individuals, if there is an instability component around the disc, then this traction or negative pressure can create pain as a result. This is why tons of clients that come to us and work with us in our one-on-one -on -one online low back program will report that they went and tried decompression and it flared them up and it made them worse or it made their leg pain worse. And it's just because their situation, their disc does not like that negative pressure and there's probably some instability around the disc or around those joints. So we need to take a different approach for these individuals. For these types of individuals, what we do is we start with spine and core stability-based movements to help reinforce that area, to provide it with the stability it needs before trying to go through disc decompression or loading protocols. What we have found just talking to thousands of people with disc and sciatica issues is that probably 70 to 80% of people will do okay with decompression protocols. Very rarely does it provide long lasting results because once again, it's not requiring anything of you. It's preaching that you can just lay there and it'll fix it for you. That's not true. You need to have exercises to fix it yourself that we're going to teach you today. But for about 70, 80%, you know, they'll do okay with decompression, not a long-term solution, but about 20 to 30%, it'll make them worse. And here's a quick tip. If you're someone who hasn't tried decompression yet, we find that a lot of individuals that notice that rolling around in bed at night causes pain. These are typically individuals that have a higher risk of flaring up from decompression because when you're laying down, when you're laying down, gravity is not on your spine. It is a more decompressed type position. And then you're adding rotation with that, that traction and rotation. If that creates pain, we typically find that to be a warning sign for that. Or even if you're just standing and rotating that sometimes rotational sensitivities can be a warning sign for that as well. But ultimately, you know, you can give it a shot yourself to determine, uh, but it's still not really going to provide a long-term, you know, result most times anyway. So here's what you should do. What we do with these clients is we start with a very simple stability protocol. Now, this is gonna be much more in depth if we were actually working one-on-one -on -one with you in our program. I'm gonna give you our top two movements that a lot of our clients typically do very well with. The first one, we call this our bear position. This is when you are on all fours, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. You're going to raise the knees up just a couple inches off the ground, and you're gonna hold this for time. So it looks like you are flat as a table, holding a tabletop position, but you will immediately notice your entire core is being used your shoulders your entire torso and even your quads and your hip flexors as well this is a very difficult and effective core movement believe it or not some people think it looks very easy it isn't if you're doing it properly that we can hold for time to appropriately reinforce the spine and core musculature around these discs and joints this is a very spine friendly movement because it is in a neutral spine position and is loading muscles in a unique way that you typically aren't with most other core exercises if this is somewhat easy for you or you wish to try something harder, you can simply regress this by extending one leg at a time or one arm at a time to make it a little bit more difficult. But I would ensure that you can do the starting version first, get stronger with that over time prior to adding any progressions. Hey, real quick, if you're watching this video and you're resonating with the things that I'm saying and you're ready to be pain-free, just click the link below and you can schedule a call personally with my team so we can meet with you go over your current situation and figure out what you're missing and help you develop a game plan so that you can finally become pain-free. This is for serious people only, so click the link if you are ready to go. Back to the show. Now, after you've gotten stronger with the bear position, let's move over to our dead bug position. Now, this is not just a core movement. I'm gonna explain why we do this with these types of 
decompression sensitive individuals because when we perform the dead bug movement, which is when you're flat on your back, keeping the lower back flat into the floor, arms in the air, legs in the air, and you're slowly alternating one leg and one arm at a time, opposite arm, opposite leg, while keeping that lower back flat into the floor. You're just rotating one leg and one arm back at a time, alternating each side. Yes, you're gonna feel your core with this. You should, you should absolutely feel your core with this. But this does provide a temporary decompression-like effect while your core and spine stabilizers are in effect. So it's not a total like loose, uninvolved decompression. It is more of an active decompression. And this will feel much, much better for these types of disc individuals. In fact, it can help open up that disc space and allow us to then do these next exercises even better. So we use this very strategically for a lot of our other clients where maybe some disc exercises are, are, are sensitive or they're not ready for them. We'll sometimes use these two stability movements to help open up the spine and prepare it for these disc specific exercises. Now, before I explain to you these last exercises that are key to address the disc to truly decompress the disc and remove any of this pain, I want to make it clear that to go through this process in the most effective way possible, you need to have a proper strategy to track progress and to determine how is it affecting your sensitivities. So we have a free step-by-step -step SATICA guide on my private Facebook group. It is called Rehab Fix Low Back Program. I encourage you to look it up and join the group because on this SATICA guide that you will immediately get access to that is posted only in this group, it'll walk you through how we audit this process. So how you determine which exercises are good or bad and it'll, it'll, it'll take you through that. So I highly recommend you go and grab that SATICA guide as you work through these exercises so that you can determine which ones are right for you and which ones are not so that you can really see faster results. So go join that group. Now, the last exercise we want to end with are now our disc loading exercises. We've stimulated our spine and core stabilizers. We've provided an active decompression type motion. Now our discs are ready to be loaded in a way that does not include static decompression. We do not want to do that if we feel pain with this. So for these disc loading movements, this involves finding a direct of your spine that the disc likes in performing that movement consistently. So for many of you, if you just you know type in Google disc herniation exercise or static exercise, you're going to find extension based exercises or a cobra type movement. That is one of multiple ranges of motion that can be helpful. The most common ones is yes, extension where you would lay on your stomach, low back relaxed, glutes relaxed, pushing your chest up off the ground like you're performing a cobra pose and slowly working into this over time, ensuring that once again, this is give you the right outcome. I highly advise you grab our Sadaka guide or just schedule a call directly with us so we can take you through this process, of course, to make sure that you're doing the right movements. So extension is, is probably the most popular one, but you can also do the opposite motion, flexion, flexion. You would perform a, a simple one as a knees to chest movement where you're flat on your back. You grab your knees, you pull your knees to your chest. If you're unable to get onto the floor, you can sit in a chair and bend forward and grab your ankles and pull yourself forward. This is a more unique type of presentation, but can be helpful after these stability movements are performed, of course. And then lastly, a lateral glide. A lateral glide is a much more unique scenario where someone might feel shifted. They might feel kind of twisted or rotated to the side. And if we're really trying to load the disc and get that to regress and centralize, which is our primary focus through our centralization process, which is what our program is founded on. It's the, it's the technique and process that I created in this program. What we want to see is shifting the hips to the sides, you lean against the wall. Typically the side of symptoms is going to be, and then you're going to push your hips into the wall, trying to push further and further into this motion. Once again, tracking your symptoms and having a proper uh, test and retest process to determine if these are the right movements for you so that we know which ones are the right ones. So in summary, individuals that get pain with decompression, we want to start with stability movements because it's likely because there's an unstable degree of something going on in there that does not like that negative pressure or that traction around the disc or the joints. So let's start with these two key stability movements, the bear position for time with some minor progressions and then the dead bug motion as well, which provides that core stability and active decompression. Those are the two exercises we would start with. And then we would transition into the correct disc loading protocol so that we can actually centralize the disc, get it away from the sensitive tissues, get it away from the nerve to reduce that pain fast. When you have the right protocol, you should see massive improvement within two weeks. Massive, okay? And this is what we do is we help people find the right protocol and we help individuals find the right prescription. So as I'm saying these exercises, there could be different prescriptions for you. For some of you, 
For the core movements, you might be able to do a little, you might be able to do a lot. For the disc loading movements, this is very specific. Some of you could only do maybe one or two sets a day. Some of you, we would have doing dozens of, of times per day. It depends on the individual, it depends on the exercise, it depends on your condition. So finding the right prescription, just like any medication, is the most important part. And if you need guidance in doing that, we would love to guide you. This is what we do. This is why we exist. So I know that this video today is going to give you massive help, massive, massive help. If you actually do it and you apply it and you take action, but not everybody can just get results by following these videos and kind of guessing what movements they should do or what pattern, or, you know, I, I post videos every single day. They're not sure which ones to do. So if you're serious about getting better and you realize, Hey, you need a helping hand and you only have one life and you deserve to live it pain free, then schedule a call with us, go to the description or wherever the tags I have here and book a call with us. We'll be with you for a free initial consultation so we can go over your situation. We can figure out exactly what you need, the exercise you should should or should not be doing. And we can really start to identify the clear plan for you so that we can avoid injections, avoid surgery, avoid drugs, and just avoid further time with pain and further time with decreased quality of living. Nobody needs that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's get you healthy and let's do this the right way. Once again, be sure to join my Facebook group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program, so you can get additional exclusive content and our free Sataka guide immediately upon joining. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave a five-star rating and review so we can grow this podcast and help reach more individuals who deserve to get results, who feel like they're spinning their tires and getting frustrated in doing so. As always, move more, move in nature, move in the sun. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.